<sighs> Mind if I join you? Yeah, sure. Oh. Beautiful, aren't they? Stunning. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. How come you're not driving yours? I'm afraid the engine's gonna blow up. Right, yeah, that does happen, yep. Yours is brand new. Why aren't you driving yours? Depreciation. Right. Gran Turismo Trofeo. <laughs> but why would you buy that when for literally a tenth of the price you can buy one of these? That's a rhetorical question. Please don't answer it. High mileage Maserati Gran Turismos might not be the most intelligent choice of used car, but that's irrelevant, especially when you just sit back and enjoy looking at what is one of the prettiest designs in modern automotive history. Okay, we joke about how this is potentially gonna break and then it's gonna- Can you just, can I just enjoy it for a minute? Stationary? Yes, I just, I'm enjoying looking at so it. So it's actually a real thing? Yeah, yeah. What What actually goes wrong with this? Just, can I just, one second? No, it does look good. No, for good. Okay, listen. <laughs> there are quite a few things that these cars are, no there's a uh, reason Give us the highlights. Yeah. Um, all right, well, one of the big ones is a little coolant hose that it, it's kind of down underneath there and it will very often crack because of heat and then dump the coolant all over the ground. It's, it's a cheap part though, it's like 300 bucks. So fixed for 300. No, you have to remove the transmission to get to it. Right. Um, yeah. What's the saying? If you can't afford an old new car, you can't afford the old car? Yeah, this is one of those. Well, um, so, well, there's this cam variator issue. It's like the variable valve timing. Right. And that's very much a top end engine dismantle to to fix that so very expensive as well. very also very expensive yeah other than that there's just a long list of things long list yeah okay so that's yeah. the highlights yeah well i mean this one has one of the actual issues oh it does yeah the, so a very common fault is that the 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 airbag light will come on on the dash and it means the airbag on the passenger side is not working and this has that yes cheap to fix well yeah see the people that own the car currently took it to ferrari and they diagnosed it for a thousand bucks done no, no, that was the diagnosis. The repair is 14,000. Right. Which they didn't do. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think go drive it, figure it out, and... Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna enjoy it for another moment here, stationary, you know? Yeah. You're worried if you drive this, it will break, and this video ends before you even start it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't okay. you go first? Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll drive the new one. Yeah. Okay. I'll just reinstall this, it's pretty easy. Oh no. Okay, Thomas isn't the only one trying to keep the Maserati Gran Turismo holy. I'm sorry. For 2024, Maserati have given us this new Gran Turismo. There is an all-electric trim coming, but today we have the Trofeo trim, generously lent to us by the heroes at Maserati of Toronto, right here in Canada. And it is the most powerful internal combustion option. And it's a good thing that Trofeo means trophy, because today's tester will cost over $300,000 Canadian. Yeah. For that price, it better be more than just pretty. Okay, here's the excellent news. This new Maserati Gran Turismo Trofeo is Great. And the only reason that's a surprise is because we've lost the old Maserati V8. The thing that makes Maseratis Maserati in my mind. This instead gets the twin turboed 
Porsche V6 Natuno engine. And if that's a familiar name, it's because it's the same engine that's in the mid-engine supercar, the Maserati MC20. Except this doesn't make quite as much horsepower. This is 542 horsepower in this spec. There's a moderner below it, which is in the 400s. So this is really the one you want. Three and a half seconds to 60 and it's all-wheel drive so it puts that power down no problem sound is a big question mark when you lose a v8 and in the mc20 this same engine made the most ridiculous ensemble of turbocharged sounds boost sounds spooling sounds wastegate flutter this actually has none of those what it has is actually a very lovely sound and it cracks on upshift i was ready to be disappointed quite glorious in a V6 way. Nothing can compare to the V8 Maserati and I don't need to tell you, Thomas is going to show you in a minute. Where this probably overtakes the old one though, is not only in speed, because this is the most powerful engine ever attached to a Gran Turismo, but just engineering has come a long way. Suspension has come a long way. This thing is supple, it rides nicely. In comfort mode, it soaks up the bumps, and yet still, as you go over a crest or an undulation, it's one and done. It doesn't hop around. And put it in Corsa mode, and it drops on its suspension in a very aggressive way. The fuel gauge and the temperature gauge stop smiling, and they go into more of a grimace, because this car starts taking life seriously. The good news is, is you as a driver, don't need to because this is Ferrari light. It feels joyous, it feels nimble. The steering ratio is short, so it makes it feel lighter on its feet than it really is. It's 4,000 odd pounds, and in any mode, it's light. But it actually really fits the personality of this car. It's beautifully weighted, and beautiful is the operative word because it's very much like a Ferrari in that way. That is a character it shares with cars like the Roma and the Aston Martin DB12. And it's a characteristic we love because it makes it feel so sporty. I mean, this is a Grand Tourer. It's supposed to be beautiful and supple and comfortable, and it is. And then you put it into Corsa mode and you take a turn like that and suddenly you are in a riotous sports car with column mounted shifters that feel so satisfying with this DCT. I have loved this car. It's, it's, it's great. It's so great. Is it a $300,000 experience? No, it's not. No. Yeah, I, no, it's not. But here's the thing about Maseratis. For better or worse, they never really hold on to that number, do they? Speaking of which, I think it's time for Thomas to drive the uh, Maserati Gran Turismo already depreciationale. <laughs> the good stuff. The engine. I'll put this window up so you can hear me. This is the F136 engine, which was used in cars like, oh, I don't know, the Ferrari 430. Then a version of it was used in the Ferrari 458 Italia. The difference is where the Ferrari versions have a flat plane crank, this 2008 Maserati has a cross plane crank, which means instead of wailing and screaming, it growls and barks. And this sound can be yours for the low, low price of 35 grand Canadian. You'll just have to convince the lovely folks at Vehicle Direct here in Toronto, who sell cars both in Canada and the US, that you don't want any of their other exotic offerings. But hey, who needs a Rolls Royce when you can make noises like this? And the sound is so good that right now, it's distracting me from the fact that the air conditioning 
isn't working in this car. <laughs> the transmission is a ZF six speed. You could get an F1 style gearbox in this with the really fast shifts. This one's probably a bit more reliable. But you know what? It's not really about the transmission. I prefer if you don't think about the transmission because the transmission in this one sucks. <laughs> the shifts are really slow and it doesn't really give you much when you use the paddles. But I still use them anyway because I want to be in control of the sound that this car makes when you upshift. You see the trident in front of you, you click the paddle and there's just this clap of thunder as Poseidon parts the seas. It's just such a symphony of noises. <laughs> so deep and guttural. It is the reason you would buy this car. Because it just sounds so great. Oh my god. <laughs> it ain't quick. It's actually, I would, I would go so far as to call it slow. Uh, 399 horsepower, 339 pound-feet of torque. It is more about the sound than anything else. Yes. <laughs> go. Seven and a half thousand RPM and it shifts up for me automatically even though I'm in manual mode. But hey, as I said, it's about the noise, not the driver engagement because there isn't much. Steering is, well, it's hydraulic, so there's some feedback, but it is quite light. And uh, there's a huge amount of lag between when I turn this wheel <laughs> and when something happens in the front. That said, the rest of it is, is nice. It has this Italian feel to it. That is, it feels low and it feels sleek. It drives like it looks. And the ride is actually pretty good. If you ignore all the suspension knocks that this one's making, it's, it's nice. It's definitely set up for touring. It's set up for showing off, is actually what it's set up for. Oh, this the noise. It sounds outrageous. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm really overheated. Okay. Whew. Well, the good news with all the sweat is that I'll have my hair slicked back. So I'll fit in at the next Maserati owner's meet. <laughs> yes. Make noise, be obnoxious. This is the Maserati way. Before we pulled over to compare how much the styling has changed or hasn't changed in 17 years, James and I hopped in each other's cars for a brief drive. This does drive very well. Doesn't it? Yeah, I, yeah. Actually, I actually very much enjoy it. The problem is, the problem is, is that it has a V6 and for how much money? $300,000. $300,000. Yeah. Just off the top of my head, here's a few cars that give you a slightly more exciting driving experience. Oh, I don't know. How about the MC20? Which oh, yeah. is the mid-engined version of this. The one that is a supercar. With more horsepower. <laughs> with more horsepower. I think I'd take that. I think I would take an Aston Martin DB12 with a twin turbo V8. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, McLaren Altura. We just gave that a go. You could get a McLaren Artura. It's, for not, the it's not exactly a touring coupe, but it's no, it but is a similar you, price. How about a 911? Wait, what 911 can you get? Turbo S. You get a Turbo S. You can get a okay. Turbo S. Okay, actually, this is more fun to drive than a Turbo S. Yes. Yes. But it depreciates really hard. <laughs> and there's actually going to be one above this, yeah. which is the Folgore. The Folgore. I, I, I realize I will butcher that however I say it. Yeah. Because if I just go Folgore. Actually, I'm not sure it's above, it's more like lateral, because it's an EV. Yes, but it's getting bonkers horsepower and it yes. does 0 to 60 in two and a half seconds. That's very cool, actually. So, yeah, yeah tri motor. But yeah, no, definitely, uh, it's definitely expensive. This yeah. drives how that looks. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so the, yeah, I've lost the middle bit. I, so actually, now it won't I stay. actually don't mind how this drives at all. You know what? It isn't bad, is it? The like, sound makes up for anything. Pretty much. It could drive like a shopping cart. And then you'd hear a downshift. Yes. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Oh. oh, it's just such a sensational I, this engine is, noise. The, this V8 and this Maserati is the one thing I will interrupt conversations with my wife for. She'll be talking about, oh, there's a Maserati V8. <laughs> yeah, that's like Ooh, that's, that's how that's, 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 that's how good one. this sounds. That's it. That's the Maserati. Yeah. No, it is. It is a. Oh, it's, it gets fingerprinty very quickly. Yes. What? Yeah, we got them both in black today. Yeah. Undeniably, 
this is a later version of that. No, I, they, they did a fantastic job yeah. capturing this thing and making it with the new Maserati design language because it's got the MC20 kind of headlight design. Yeah, and right? then this, this dip in here. Yeah. I mean, 16 model years separate these two cars. So that's a significant amount. Listen, we, 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 you can't, we can't have it both ways. We can't complain when they don't no, keep the good design I language. I like it. I like right? it. I think they did a great job with this. I think it looks fantastic. It's an evolucionione. Evolucionione. Yeah. If you go from this, this like pillar backwards, all of this is identical. That's identical. The way the rear mirror, like to get the trident. It's just, it's just slightly right? sharper in some ways. Like even the yeah. font of Maserati on the back in this is sharper. Looks like they've been practicing. Like, like the, <laughs> where the, if you look carefully, like where these wing mirrors are, yeah. or door mirrors are, they're differently mounted. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But it's only if you stare at it. And then the tail lights, sort of the lights on both cars is what dates them. Yeah. Is what dates this compared to that. Yeah. Like the tail lights with the white inside the red looks old now. Right. The I front think, light listen, when the, they're on, the, I mean, light technology has come on so far. The thing is, is that if you glance at both of them, yeah. you, other than the fact that this one has a hole in the side of it, you wouldn't know that this one is this many years older, honestly. Or, or $270,000 cheaper. By the sound of it though, you think this was more expensive. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's true. But I'm just, I just, I'm just realizing something right now. You could, could you buy, could you buy a, a DB12 and this for the price of that? <laughs> only technically. <laughs> only <laughs> technically. Only literally. This is a package on that. Well, let me let me show you just how crap the interior is. Okay, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're in a, a really badly built tree house at the top of a very tall tree. <laughs> it's very creaky. Uh, actually, we do have some very nice wood. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Isn't that nice? It does feel old in here. No, that's because it is old in here. It does feel... Well, it's not that old. No, it's not. But, but when things age really poorly, yes. they feel older than they are. Yes. Is it all working? No. Um, <laughs> so, well, you, air conditioning, you discovered. It's warm in here, yeah. yeah. We don't have that, it's not necessary. Um, so the, one of the big, big issues that all the owners talk about on the forums is the sticky buttons. That doesn't mean that the buttons stick, it just means that they are physically tacky. Like, 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 like soggy touch biscuit. this, touch this. Oh like, yeah. You see oh. how it's like tacky to the touch? It's because over time oh. the plastic degrades. It happens to all of them. No one is safe from the sticky tacky buttons in the Maserati. Yeah, um, and the, it's, it's, we get to see all the lights on the gauge. All the, the lights, yeah. yeah, all the things. Yeah, yeah. Um, the seats are reasonably comfortable. Yeah, they're obviously quite a slidey leather. And they're actually quite adjustable. Like on the side, you've got the two buttons, right? And they yeah. do a different, you know, there's- Got the red stitching going on. Yeah. The, st the seats are quite styled. We have the, the trident embedded in the headrest. Very cool. Which is an expensive option in the new one, I'll show yeah. you. Yeah. Analog gauge cluster. Yeah, I don't mind the gauges. I think at the, the problem is, is that at the time, this was going up against things like the Aston Martin Vantage, and the gauges in the Aston Martin Vantage are like, look like they belong in a museum. Um, yeah, this is obviously um, horrible. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, listen, it's 30 grand. It's the price of a Civic. It wasn't 30 grand, but yeah. No, yeah, but it's the depreciation. But if you add the $14,000... <laughs> Thing to get rid of that airbag sensor light. <laughs> it stops me. That takes you to 44 grand. Yeah, and that doesn't matter because if you're driving a Maserati, you don't really have passengers in the seat. You wish you had a, a female passenger You've in the seat. You've got only you fans playing in the corner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. You just hear. We can't know. suppose to assume what a. Presume, presuppose, assume what a Maserati driver is like. Right no, now, we, it's you. Yeah, and right now it is currently me. But the only thing I have to go off this is, works. is you like this, like this yeah, image. This is yeah. you. And listen, Sticky, I'll, smelly, listen, no air conditioning, <laughs> Thomas. The only thing I have to go off of is 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 every single Maserati driver I've ever seen. So, <laughs> hopefully, none of you are watching this video. Listen, you're all gentlemen. All right, right? let's see what 16 years and three hundred thousand dollars does. Please, please. Not enough. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this is nicer. It is a lot nicer. Yeah. I got cooled seats yeah. cooling me down. Air conditioning works. Yes. You know, if you look for it, mm -hmm. there are some places mm -hmm. where maybe, mm -hmm. you know. No, 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 this is how it's supposed to be. It's an Italian car. Yeah. Right, like we, we there, there must be flaws. There must be flaws, because I need to know, James, that they have prioritized 
things like sound, driving, and the way it looks on the outside. And they have. I would be worried if it was put together really well in here. Yes. Because <laughs> right. then, well, then if because if it was that, they could charge three hundred thousand dollars for it. But <laughs> we've got a five thousand dollar Sonus sound system in here. Okay. Um, which is quite good. Yeah. Uh, other comforts, we've got these nine hundred dollars. I said the Tridents in the headrests. That's a nine hundred dollar option. That's not that bad. No, we've got macro twill carbon fiber, which is like three grand. This is a very well optioned car. Yeah, it is. What do you think about all this? Like, we're, it's, we're all digital now, right? I think, yeah, I think the gauge cluster is beautiful. Yeah, it I, is I like cool. the different views. Yeah. So, so the, yeah, there's the different drive modes. Yep. But then there's also different views for the actual cluster. Right. So this has the, the digital map behind like an Audi. But then, yeah. yeah, keep pressing down, there's all the different stuff. Yep. Yeah, obviously, when you change the different drive modes, you get like, there's, there's a nice center tack. Lovely center tack. Like However, that. that isn't somehow the centerpiece of this car. What is? The centerpiece is the centerpiece. I see the what you did there. The timepiece in the center. So it used that, to be analog. So it's analog in the one we were just yes. sitting in. This yes. is a digital version of, a, of an, an analog clock. Yes. However, if you go to clock down here, yeah. you can change it. So that's the clock mode. Okay. And then, so there's three different clocks. Oh. There's classic. Sport you as a oh, watchman. Oh, that is really good. And then design. I really like that. So Look you can. How smooth the second one is. In good as design. It's very smooth, right? Yes. Um, By design, it means no design yeah. at all. No, this is Minimalism. this is really but nice. Then you can choose compass, <gasps> pedals. What do you mean pedals? You, you fill off the brake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. And then a G meter. And a G meter. All up there. That is. Brilliant. I actually prefer that to, to, to Porsche's uh, Sport Chrono. I think it's more fun. No, it's more fun. You get to change it, yeah. right? Like, I love the fact that they've kept the clock, the Maserati clock, but they're like, you know what? It's the modern world. Yeah. Let's digitize the crap out of this and give you some options. And, uh, so the split screen here, this is very new Audi style stuff. It is, uh, yeah. But it works because the HVAC's down here and your seats are down here with the ventilated. Yep. And then all your other stuff is up here. Right. What I don't particularly like is the gear selectors here. Yeah, I can't even really see them. They're hard to see. They barely light up when you press them, and they're not even they that satisfying. Like, no, you're actually moving this whole panel in and out. When yeah. <laughs> and then there's, they, a there's no volume yeah, knob. This is, for this God's is the sake. crime that the Honda Civic made years ago, which is instead of a volume knob, they do a slider on a thing. What? 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 When? When are you all gonna listen? When are you gonna listen? No one. No. No one likes hey, this. Thomas, it's okay because it's a Chrysler. So. Um, Oh, you, sorry. You yeah, the, we've got, we've got the just same like a Dodge button. Challenger. You've got the you've buttons got the on the back of the steering wheel. Okay, yeah. of course you do. Yeah, uh, you've got the drive yeah. mode button, the sport button. They all feel a bit plasticky. Yeah, they do. That's but okay. it is very nice in here. I think it's comfortable too. It is comfortable. The, the seats feel a bit stiff, but I've done a long drive in this, and it's been fine. Absolutely fine. Okay. Visibility is good. Yeah. No, no, no. The, from in here, it actually after driving it and being in here and seeing this little cool clock thing. This feels like a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar car if it didn't have a V six, right? Like, in you think the, two fifty? I feel like it feels one fifty in here. It feels one fifty in here, but if you had a big belching farting V eight. Oh yeah, you could do another fifty. Right? That's I mean, it would it would bring it up. I just think that with what's out there right now in that price bracket, like, there's just so many other options. Yeah, because I, I was thinking, well, you know, if you, if you actually think about it, I don't have Type R over this. What, uh, F Type R? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? But if you actually think about it, cars that offer this le level of comfort, technology, 0 to 60 time, confidence, and beauty. Yeah, there's, no, there's quite a few options. There's quite a few. Yeah. There's the DB12, <laughs> there's, there's, like there's like the GT3, options. there's the. Yeah. <laughs> you have to really like Maserati. Yeah. And if you, <laughs> if, you want, if you buy the old one, you have to really like pain. So I think for 30 grand, it's a lot of car. It is. Um, yeah. And I think for this, yeah, if you I'm really. It's going to engine swap this one. With that one? Yeah, just I don't care about the speed or the all-wheel drive. Just Are you curious? The noise. Are you curious about the Folk Gordy? No. Um, <laughs> anyway, so... <laughs> so, very nice car. Yeah. Beautiful. I am actually curious about it. I would like to see what they can do. Um, listen. It's another thousand pounds of so, weight. <laughs> this yeah. is already a heavy car. Okay. Uh, it's middling. I, I, I like Maserati. I've always liked the style. And it's just one of those... This is a, this is a crime of passion. Right. Buying this car. It's a crime because it, it, it just doesn't make financial sense. But it is a crime of passion. But if you're the second buyer. Second hand crime of passion? What's that look like? Well, because this is 300 new. Yeah, yeah. So it, it'll be 50 grand in two years. Yeah. <laughs> it's just wait. Actually, that one took 16 years to drop to 35. It did. Yeah. So. Canadian, by the way. That's Canadian. like you know, 28 US. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, so. 
Let's do a conclusion to wrap up our thoughts because this is an interesting old versus new. It's been quite fun, actually. Really yeah. fun. Really yeah. enjoyed it. In many of our old versus new episodes, we've found that the old sports car is more pure, more engaging, and then the old luxury cars are often just old. And Maseratis, like Aston's, are as sporting as they are luxury. So by that measure, this should be a mixed bag. But it isn't, for the most part. Yes, we've lost the V8 sound, but the interior is finally modern. The car is absolutely rapid, and it still feels rear-wheel drive despite powering all four wheels. The suspension is more sophisticated, the car is now lighter, and perhaps most importantly, it still looks like a proper Gran Turismo. Price aside, and we must put price aside, all of that is very commendable. The old Maserati is old. It's worse in every way. Except one. That new Gran Turismo might be faster and lighter and more luxurious, but when one of those echoes off the urban landscape, no one is going to interrupt their spouse's story about how work is going to say, shh, do you hear that? That's a Maserati. And that probably still isn't worth all the ownership headaches of the old one, but what if I don't know where I'm going with this and we just edit engine sounds over top of... The